Hi, my name is Judith Thompson. I'm director of the Harold Feinstein Photography Trust. Harold Feinstein was my husband of 27 years. I decided to come out from behind the computer and show my face, <laughs> which is an act of courage for me because I'm a fairly camera shy person. But it is the month of March in the year 2020, uh, a time when the world has changed. And I felt inspired uh, to speak out and to show my face because I heard from a friend of mine who's a photo dealer in Paris that he is really struggling right now with this virus, COVID-19. And I stopped to send my deep solidarity and strength to him. Uh, and it made me realize I feel blessed to, to know only one person who's um, been struck down with this, but behind the litany of rising statistics every day, uh, there's a parent, a friend, a child, a sibling to others who uh, is loved by others. And I think it's good to stop and uh, hold people in our hearts for a moment. And so, too, uh, the economic safety net, um, which for many was already so thin or, or non-existent, has also been yanked out from under so many. So suffering is widespread, and it's good to pause and uh, feel what that means on a grand scale. And at the same time, there's a great will to connect and it's remarkable deep inner resourcing that's coming forth um, in so many different ways. Uh, so as equal to uh, the amount of suffering we're seeing, I think we're finding gifts in the adversity and sharing them. I wanted to share some words that came into my inbox uh, recently from the journalist John Moalem, who wrote an article called This is How You Live When the World Falls Apart, and it's really about the human response to the great Alaska earthquake in 1964. In it, he says, thrown all together in one unrelenting present, we are made to recognize in one another what we deny most vehemently about ourselves. In the end, it's our, our vulnerability that connects us. And I think sometimes we hear the word vulnerable and we think weakness. Uh, in our culture, being vulnerable is something to uh, guard against in some ways. But when we vehemently deny our vulnerability, as he suggests, we don't become stronger uh, we become further and further removed from the connective tissue of our common humanity, which is our true safety net. And it's really there in that place that we find our most profound joy in being alive. Before I came to be doing the beautiful work of consolidating Harold's legacy, I spent many decades in the field of social healing working with those from war zones who were willing to puncture the protective membrane uh, that had built around their wounds by sharing their stories with each other and reaching across that abyss of personal tragedy and historic enmity and building a community which was really midwifed by mutual vulnerability and compassion uh, when I met Harold, I was engaged in a project called Children of War, which was doing just this with young people from war zones. And he brought his camera and his appreciative eye into our community and uh, took portraits of some of the young people. He put them together in a collage, which on more than a few occasions he stated was his own favorite uh, artistic collection. 
So, of course, it didn't ever get into his portfolio and has never been viewed by art dealers or many others. But I'm sharing it uh, now as a representation of uh, this irrepressible resilience of the human spirit, uh, which to a large extent is liberated by a willingness to find strength in compassion or uh, be strong in the broken places, as Hemingway famously said. So here it is. Hope you can see it well. Um, so I want to go back to gratitude, which is where I started, and I want to express specifically gratitude to those I've come to know through the art world, which is a, a new family for me. I became uh, a shepherd and champion of Harold's work out of my deep devotion to him, but also because his imagery and his teachings are so nourishing and needed in the world today. And in the process of doing this work, I've met so many people who have guided me, supported me, and partnered with me, and I want to thank them all. The uh, art dealers, the curators, the filmmakers, the publishers, and the printers, who I've had fortune to work with, uh, people of the highest integrity and creative imagination. Um, studio managers and interns who've helped to steady the ship during difficult times and steer it in the right direction. You know who you are and I thank you. Uh, and to others who, like me, are striving to honor the contributions of a great artist and passing on their wisdom to others. And to the many photographers and artists I've come to know and respect through Harold's Circle students and colleagues and beyond that. Frederick Nietzsche said, we have art in order not to die from, from reality. And in our current reality, these words perhaps ring out, but I would prefer to reformulate this and say, we have art in order to inspire our imaginations. It is art that helps us make meaning and create narratives of re resilience and of resistance to the prevailing fear-mongering that's being fostered by too many people with a bully pulpit. So we need visionary art that can tap into universal truths, lift our spirits, and claim the higher ground. And truly, we're all artists. I think one of my favorite quotes from Harold's teaching tapes echoes this when he says, if you think of any great poem that has moved you, any piece of music that has stirred your heart, any wonderful painting or photograph, there's one word behind it, and that word is yes. The word no has never produced anything. Art is an affirmation. Art is an affirmation. It is an act. And that first yes begins it. So in this position, we're all capable of being artists when we allow that which captures our imagination and stirs our souls to become an action in this world. And to some it may sound naive, but in my experience, it's the antidote to fear. And it is contagious. So spread it around the world. Just like the people in Italy who are singing from their balconies. What a gift. Thanks for listening. Carry on. Stay safe. Stay vulnerable and connected. Make art with your life. And stay inspired by the human spirit. Thank you.